Mr. Pratt is not here, we'll move on from number nine. That item's now closed. We'll move on to item number ten. Upland Games Stamp Request. Game Division Biologist Sean Espinoza and Wildlife Staff Specialist Elmer Bull. Action. The Commission will review and be asked to approve ten projects submitted for funding from Upland Graham Stamp Funds. Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, Sean Espinoza, Upland Game Staff Specialist with the Department of Wildlife. Um, I'll leave it to the pleasure of the Commission um, whether you would like to hear uh, a rehash of a uh, progress report or whether or not you want to move on to the actual projects themselves. Um, there are, were a few projects that came into question at our last meeting. Uh, I don't know if you want to focus on those or if you want to focus on all of the projects within the packet as a whole. Mm. I'm thinking we might uh, just go with the couple problematic ones. The last one, or is there a favor? Does the commission have a favor on this? Sean, when you're talking, you need to turn that mic down. Is better? Yeah. <laughs> Much better. You don't have to get that one. All right, let's go over the ones didn't have last time, and then we'll go over any changes that went on with any of these. Good, please. You want to start, Elmer, um, with the uh, sure. water development projects? Okay. Good afternoon, Chairman Rain, uh, other commissioners. Uh, my name is Elmer Bull. I'm a wildlife staff specialist for, for Endow. Um, Sean and I are, are here to represent the list of projects that uh, we would like to request funding for from the Upland Bird Stamp uh, Program Fund. Um, as you'll recall, at the meeting in Ely, uh, there was some concern on, uh, about a couple of, of aspects of the presentation that day. Uh, one of those being um, on the list of, of projects or um, uh, funding that we were requesting, there was uh, one line item for $160,000 in salary. And uh, the board had uh, concern about the fact that the we did not identify uh, what that salary was going to be a pertinent to relative to that list of projects. So um, what I did was go back and, and amend um, the water development uh, project proposals. Um, I'll go back for a second. I, I conferred with the staff biologist that put this list together originally to uh, make sure that I understood uh, what that $160,000 in salary was to be a pertinent to. He confirmed that that salary figure was uh, going to be used for the first three projects on the list, which include uh, Southern Nevada Upland Game Water Development, uh, or maintenance, I should say, uh, then also Southern Nevada Upland Game Development, Water Developments, and then the Upland Game Water Development Maintenance Program in, uh, in the western and eastern regions. So, um, and I will go ahead and address those at this time. One thing that I, I need to point out uh, at the very start is that the third project listed there, Upland Game Water Development Maintenance, uh, Western and Eastern Regions, when I was going back through and, uh, and calculating uh, this, the amount of salary that would be a pertinent to that project and then coming up with a total, uh, I made a mistake and uh, didn't include uh, some numbers that should have been in there, primarily operating money mileage and also travel and consequently the the number that I came up with there and that is on the list of thirty three thousand nine hundred and twenty one dollars is short by twelve thousand five hundred dollars and I wanted to point out that error um, I apologize for that um, I just uh, failed to in working from the old form to the new form I failed to include some numbers so that that total for that project should be forty six thousand four hundred twenty one dollars can you going back, can um, you go over uh, exactly which item that would be over just the general. I see it's just one okay, item. Okay, right here. Yeah, I mean, that's under salary. That increases under the salary portion as opposed to travel, or is that split out? Do have to split out your salary, um, travel, operating? On the form that was filled out um, and, and was sent back to you, uh, the salary was 15421 The numbers that I failed to include included travel of 10000 
um, operating in helicopter 500 and then mileage in at, at, two, at 50 cents a mile, so 2,000. For those three numbers totaled up 12,500. I failed to include those and that's where I fell short. Uh, and I caught that error this morning. Had I seen it sooner, I would have resubmitted this. So what I did, um, in an effort to, to try to uh, uh, determine how much salary would be pertinent to each of those three water development uh, projects, I went back to the original project proposal that was submitted by by the authors, uh, that being Roddy Shepard and, uh, on two of those projects and uh, Clint Garrett on the other one, looked at the, um, the number of man days that they estimated um, those projects would take and uh, took those man days, uh, multiplied it times eight hours uh, in a man day, uh, multiplied that number times uh, roughly a little over $30, $30 an hour. Um, and calculated the salary that, that should be a pertinent to, to each of those projects. And if you look at the amended form, um, the salary numbers are included in there. The salary, um, of course, could be uh, incurred, I guess, by a number of different staff people. Of course, most of the work will be done by field personnel. However, uh, salary could also be charged um, by time spent by uh, habitat staff specialists like myself or a biologist three that's located uh, either in Winnemucca or down in Las Vegas. We have those uh, two of those and then we also have four <coughs> field personnel, two in Winnemucca and two in, uh, in southern Nevada. So trying to, trying to determine exactly how many hours each of those staff might spend on these projects is, is nearly impossible because it depends on what kind of uh, issues the, the water development program experiences during the course of the summer or the, the course of the year. There might be, uh, you know, in one year a staff specialist might end up spending considerably more hours dedicated to the water development program than in others. Um, so it's, it's pretty tough to try to determine exactly, um, you know, how much salary would be charged to the staff specialists, how much to the bio threes, how much to the field technicians that are actually out doing the project. So um, came up with, you know, looked at the, the salaries of those individuals, uh, came up with what I thought would be a reasonable uh, estimate uh, on, a, on a per hour basis, and that was what I used to calculate those salary numbers. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have about um, those items that that uh, that I made the changes to. Did we have any questions from the commission, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hall, uh, Elmer? Um, all endow employees. What what it sounds like you're saying that except for the top administrators, they're all getting paid by the hour. Is that the way it works, or in other words, th don't they get a regular check every week? Sure, they yeah, get a regular it's check based on an hourly salary, right. hourly wage. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, they they get a check whether they're working for <coughs> wildlife services or uh, some project, uh, <coughs> heritage project or something. They're getting a salary every mm -hmm. every week. And um, it would seem to me it'd be a a much easier way to do it to uh, restructure the whole salary program. Uh, in other words, instead of coming to uh, the commission for money based on a project, they're get already getting paid. They're going to get paid whether the project's there or not. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? That's not the way a business runs, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, there's an, an attempt, of course, to to identify costs associated with specific projects, and, and uh, each one of these projects will have a cost accounting, accounting code assigned to it. And when those individuals work on a specific project, that is documented and, and as to a certain cost accounting code. If and there's a possibility that from time to time, some of the members of these water development crews may not be working on these projects necessarily. That's going to be their primary uh, activity, no doubt but occasionally they might be out working on an antelope trapping deal and, and if that's the case then their wages are, are assigned to it um, or, or 
charted or counted to a different cost accounting code. So I understand it's, it's basically, Mr. Hall, you're, you're focusing Government on. speak, that's what it <laughs> Mr. Mr. Chairman, maybe we could have Deputy Director Cates explain the, the state cost accounting system. Very good, Mr. Hall. Uh, most state employees are in the, um, the classified service. It's covered by NRS. That includes almost all the employees of the department, with the exception of the director, deputy director, and, and the administrators. Um, they're all paid on an hourly rate. If they're full-time, they're paid 40 hours a week. So what you said is correct. They get a, they get a check regardless. Um, the, the question for us, uh, assuming they work 40 hours, uh, the question for us is, is how we're going to fund those 40 hours. And with all of our variety of federal grant funding and different fee-based funding, and this is one of those fee-based funding categories, we have to determine how much time they're going to spend on all those activities. And we have a rather complex cost accounting system to keep track of their time so that the, the hours they do spend are allocated to the correct funding source. I, I understand all that. Well, it just seems to me it would be a lot easier to do it a different way rather than have all that. Yeah, but that that's up to the legislature. Yeah. They don't control that. Yeah, that would be up to the legislature to change the, uh, the whole personnel pay structure of the state. Standard governmental accounting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reverse policy. Thank you. Mr. McBeth? Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman Raines. Uh, Patrick, um, in. Um, uh, oh, push it. In, uh, in commercial accounting, generally kept, and we have a concept called generally accepted accounting principles that um, basically uh, are uh, rules that the uh, over oversight uh, function of uh, public accounting goes by as to as to what the rules are in, in uh, for commercial businesses. Is there a similar uh, is there a sim similar concept in, in governmental accounting? Is there like a governmental accounting? Um, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yes, yes. Um, uh, the government follows basically all the same accounting standards that the AICPA uh, puts out. Um, but there's also GASB, a governmental accounting standards board that establishes further um, accounting standards for, for public entities, state and local government. And uh, uh, basically follows all the, the private sector accounting rules with the addition of, of what they call <coughs> fund accounting, which really has to do what's your source of funding and how you allocate that. And it's simply a cost accounting technique. I mean, I used to work in the private sector in manufacturing, and we had cost accounting techniques to uh, to uh, distribute personnel hours and equipment hours to different activities so that we could determine our costs. It's the same way in the public sector. We're just trying to allocate the activities to the right funding source that it's lawful to use those fundings for. Okay, uh, the funding so, so the bottom for. line is, is that it, this is a uh, standard practice? Yes. Okay, thank okay. you. Mr. Capurro? In your practice, in, in the practice of allocating your expenses, do you use a set percentage? Do you use a calculated time factor for each employee? Uh, exactly, how do you allocate the staff time to these projects? Um, well, there's a lot of different acceptable ways to, to allocate time. Um, but all of our staff keep track of their time in, a, in a, um, actual hour accounting of how, how they spend their time. And they record their time sheet. If they spent two hours on an activity, they code it to that. It's 100% it's real-time tracking for all employees. Um, you know, I've worked some places where we had random moment time <coughs> studies where you would sample people and see what activities they were doing and develop percentages from that. Uh, there's different ways that are acceptable depending on what the funding source is, but but at Endow we we do uh, what's considered the best way to do it is have everybody track their real time and, and code it that way um, each pay period. So, excuse me, Mr. Chair, go ahead. Do you um, allocate that time and that effort to every fee source or program? that has a fee attached to it that is uh, allowed to the department. By that I mean, if you have a duck stamp program, like as we do, you charge off your administrative costs for running that duck stamp program, or is that money 
or that time allocated somewhere else? Uh, well, the administrative time is an indirect cost allocation that we charge to all of our, our federal grants, like administrative staff that gets bundled in an indirect cost rate analysis that we have to get approved by the feds. And that rate is then charged to programs. But other than administrative staff, people code their time to what their program activity is. Okay. Not, a, not an bell. I had a couple of questions here. Go ahead, Mr. Lamp. Um, sure. Uh, and, and one of the county boards uh, brought this up. I think Douglas did. You know, we got projects totaling 172,110, and we got 160,000 salaries. Is that right? Yeah, I believe that's what it came to. Yes. You know, I I really don't think that was the intent of what the stamp program was. I've, I've got some problems with some specific projects here, and I'll, I'll reiterate those to you. Um, uh, on uh, budget account 4452, the western one, uh, you've got sharp tail grouse one your objective, but you've got uh, 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 native up and gain species. Now, sharp tail grouse, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, they're a subspecies of Idaho sharp tail and ge they're genetically isolated from the main population and therefore there should be tons of federal money available to them because they're genetically distinct. Is that right? No, that's incorrect. There's no federal money available for them. There's their state managed bird. Or do you, we just don't know how to apply for it? I was told there's a lot of federal money for them if you know how to apply for it. There's CRP money available for some habitat projects in Idaho uh, and Utah. But uh, here in Nevada, we don't have much applicability for CRP. So there's no federal money for sharp tail browse in Nevada, is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay. Um, and then uh, the next project I... I've Other than our W48 grant. We can use that PR funding of which we can get matched for and then use that federal grant. So there is federal monies, but can you go over a little more in the detail of how that is done? Can we apply for it? How is that? Applying for grants? Well, I mean basically you get that grant and how does that work to fund that to fund programs like these with it? It's usually funded with license dollars, but since license dollars are fairly flat or declining, then we like to replace those license dollars with other available matching state funds. Mm -hmm. And Up and Game Stamp is an applicable state fund for that. I had a Continue. question on uh, budget account uh, 4458. Which project number do we have? Do we have a uh, name or? There are different projects here. It's the uh, page. What page number at the bottom? Page uh, five. Page five. We're on the project request, and here they're requesting uh, a large sum to uh, tag mountain quail. Went through this last time, and mountain quail are they're an incidental species, and I think uh, putting six-month transmitters on mountain quail to study their migration habits is a waste of funds to the extent of uh, the dollars we're going to spend. I, I think I'd like to see that spent for the sportsmen and uh, using that money to plant uh, Hungarian partridge and put Gamble's quail, which is the heart of southern Nevada, and to use that money to transplant a couple species instead of putting transmitters on mountain quail to see their migration. Uh, I think I can tell you their migration is from food to water, water to food, etc. But I don't think that's a study that we really need to spend this money for. Even though you have other funds available, I think the, the Upland Game Stamp Fund, the 60000 could be better used than to study the migration of mountain quail. Uh, there, there's a few things I think I need to go over and uh, I think I need a chance to explain uh, that 60,000 actually isn't going towards just mountain quail on this particular project. 
actually for the release we have six thousand dollars identified for mountain quail that we have been receiving from Oregon and I actually have if I could submit this this is a graph of hunter participation and hunter harvest since 2005 for mountain quail I also have one of those graphs for rough grouse as well to show that I think our efforts are actually increasing opportunity for sportsmen around the state Can you uh, pass that up or is that Gamble's quail are the, as you said, are the most important upland game species in southern Nevada, and it's the most popular up game bird in, in Clark, Lincoln, and Nye counties, and I think we should spend more emphasis on this species. Okay. Fair enough. Let's take a look at what he's got here. Let's choose an extra. Well, it's not necessarily that we're de-emphasizing Gamble's quail. Um... I think what Mr. Uh, Lent is trying to say is he would prefer to spend that $60,000 to transplant more animals rather than utilize it for the study. John, you might go through what the 60000 is made up of. There, there, right. There's some confusion. I, I'll continue with that first. Okay. Um, so we have 6000 identified for the mountain quail themselves. Uh, for rough grouse, um, we have basically $2,400 identified for uh, capture of birds and then $1,000 for trapping supplies. Above and beyond that, for Colombian sharp tailed grouse, we have $25,000 identified as match. And that's, we've actually got that written into our W48 grant uh, for this study. So. $75,000 would be coming for Pittman-Robertson funding. We can also use these other dollars, the $6,000 plus the $3,400 from the other two projects as match for our W48 grant. Uh, and then we also have funding set aside for sage grouse. Uh, we have 30 ATS transmitters identified for uh, at $200 each for $6,000 plus 65 hours of flight time for follow-up on those, on those sage grouse. And uh, some of that funding is being utilized to uh, uh, study a, a population of birds in the Virginia mountains located north of Reno. And that's a, it's a fairly small but viable population of sage grouse near uh, a pretty urbanized area that's undergoing a lot of threats right now. And actually some of that study work has actually uh, uh, subdued some of the uh, energy development that has been talked about on that mountain, particularly wind energy development, which is a big issue throughout the state, particularly in sage grouse habitats. Um, as you get into eastern Nevada, that's becoming a, a really big issue on, on some of our major mountain uh, ridges. So we feel that this type of information, uh, particularly in relation to our energy guidelines that we have developed for sage grouse, uh, line out some areas that really should be avoided for Sage grouse. Did and, you say uh, this is subdued wind energy development in the state of Nevada? Yes. On the Virginia range. On the Virginia uh, in on that on the Virginia range. Correct. It's a pretty I, important. I, I think that word is that well. Don't get hung up. The word what it's done is about smart planning, basically. So we're able to show uh, where it's going to have the least effect on on sage grouse. Um, you know, and that's one one reason I'm glad this was brought up. This particular subject, I've <coughs> heard tell, and and I'd like to kind of see where the validity of that is. That Endow has indeed made it sufficiently costly to some wind energy companies that other wind energy companies, a couple of which have called and asked me questions about this recently, to which I didn't have any answers. That they will not come in and develop wind energy within the state of Nevada. That's yes. beyond the scope of the notice in well, the, the agenda. Okay. So, okay. so I'm wondering, this. Is, so this is, this is part of that research that is doing that. Thank you, Mr. Stockman. I'll go ahead, Mr. Cabral. Thank Sorry. you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> is there a problem in hmm. releasing I guess what you'd refer to as non-native birds, the Colombian sharp-tailed grouse. With respect to the issue that we're facing regarding the um, 
rough grouse and that would be listing it as um, endangered or or the like I, I, my, my point is is that if uh, if you were to do it and they didn't take are we are we putting ourselves uh, squarely online with uh, the efforts of those who would uh, close down hunting branching mining whatever well, I think I need to clarify that Colombian sharp-tailed grouse are a native species to Nevada. In fact, they were a major component of the upland game bird population in the state at one time. It was thought that they were extirpated around World War II. Uh, there was a few sightings in the 60s, but that was about it. They were often referred to as willow grouse um, by miners and, and ranchers at, at that particular time. But there was an additional species of grouse that we had in Nevada besides just blue grouse and sage grouse. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to get to this endangered species issue. They have been petitioned for listing at least once, Columbian sharp-tailed grouse. Uh, there's been some major efforts around the West to try and reestablish populations. The Fish and Wildlife Service looks at that as positive conservation efforts towards the species. Um, I'll also use mountain quail as, as an example. Um, those species were also petitioned for listing. Uh, there was a huge effort amongst the western states to reestablish mountain quail populations and largely successful. Uh, we have populations established, reestablished again in central Nevada. And I'm not going to say that those efforts in and amongst themselves were necessary or, or prevented the listing, but they certainly didn't hurt. Now, with Colombian sharp tailed grouse, um, the species is probably more imperiled than sage grouse. And if we don't do something real soon to help that species, then they will end up on the endangered species list. And whether or not the state of Nevada gets identified as a recovery or not, I can't say. Okay. Mr. Okay. Prior to the time that you would do this project here, what kind of population, not past, I'm talking about today, what kind of population do we have of the Colombian sharp-tailed grouse? We have a population that currently exists in the Snake Mountains north of Wells. And we also have a population that exists on the Idaho border near Goose Creek. And that was from efforts by the Idaho Department of Fish and Game to release birds along the border there. And some birds have bled over into the state of Nevada. We also have birds that are moving into Nevada that's uh, winter on uh, Elk Mountain in Unit 072. Uh, Sean, then um, these are not... Mr. Chairman, excuse, uh, uh, excuse, Mr. Vice Chairman, excuse me. We'll get to that just a second. I just had one question for him. Um, this, particular sub, this particular project, how is this particular project in this master's uh, master of science graduate student project, $100,000, how is that going to help us bring back the sharp-tailed grouse? How is that? I don't, I'm, I'm just not grasping how that's going to help us. Well, we, when we release birds, uh, it's important to follow up on the success of those birds. We just don't release them and then hope that they establish themselves. There's some issues there that are somewhat difficult to explain, but release techniques mm -hmm. often change. Um, there's some soft release techniques that we can utilize that can help the birds be more successful. There are methods of uh, actual capturing the complement of birds that we use, more hens versus more males, establishing a lek before actually releasing females. All those things come into play when trying to establish those populations. So you really need a grad student to follow up on those birds because none of our biologists have that type of time and energy commitment to devote to just one project. But none of these particular, this particular project will be putting any more birds on the mountain. It's doing the research, try to do that at some... No, the birds will be associated with that. We're getting birds free from Utah and the, and the state of Idaho. In what numbers? We're hoping to get over a course of about three years up to 200 birds. So this year maybe a third of that roughly? Okay. Probably. I'm, Mr. Vice Mr. Uh, Mr. Sean, then, then you're saying that the sharp-tailed grouse are not genetically isolated from the main population in Idaho, the ones in Nevada. They are all Colombian sharp-tailed grouse. There is plain sharp-tails, but those are thought to be a separate subspecies. These are genetically isolated from Idaho, right? 
or wrong? They are the same species, the Colombian sharp-tailed grouses right. exist in Idaho. And they're genetically isolated, so therefore, I was told there's tons of federal money if you know how to apply for it, because they are such a sensitive species. And you said no, but you're sure there isn't, right? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I will maybe bring you back some information on that, but uh, I just want to clarify that position. But, uh, you know, studying these, and I'll go back to the uh, mountain quail, I just have some problems with uh, survival movement and habitat use of mountain quail. We could spend the money and uh, transplant them like we do fish instead of study the migration habits um, because the uh, transmitters last six months and a quail's life is 12 to 16 months and uh, did we get the results of last year? Did we not do this last year? Uh, Mr. Vice Chairman, I believe we're referring to project on page 21, is that correct? 21, right. Okay, so we'll make sure we're all on the same page of which project. Yeah, that's why I gave the project okay. title, Survival, Movement, and Habitat Use of Okay, well, gotcha. Northern Nevada. That's I actually years. have the uh, seasonal uh, technician that's been following up on mountain quail in the Bill Creek Range here. Uh, if you'd like him to come up and answer any questions you have on that particular project, I can have him come up and say if you would. Do we have any results of it? I don't want to go through Listen, the whole project. I don't <coughs> it's want the appropriate results. time. John? Hi. State your name. My name is John Stefka, and I'm working for Endow doing the follow up on the mountain quail. And I'd like to answer any of the questions you guys have about them. Or do you would just like me to do a little report on where they're at right now? Just a little report. I'm going to start with a little report, and then we'll see if you have any questions. Man. Okay, well, as is, we released about 98 birds, so almost 100 birds. And of those, we collared 32 of them. And as of right now, seven to eight of them are alive still so that's not that's not too good is what you're thinking but in terms it's about 30 percent of the collared population which is considered a success compared to all these previous studies so it all in all it's it's going well and they've actually spread out into all suitable habitat types all along the mountains there and they are uh, doing good so what is did you have any information what killed the other <coughs> avian predators Hawks, falcons, eagles, and that's that's a big component of it. Is why we need to follow up is to see exactly what is killing them, and learn from our mistakes, as where to release and what type of habitat to do so in. Mr. Vice Chairman, if you just if you, if you just plant them, like you do trout, they either get caught or they survive, and if there's any left over, they reproduce, and if they don't, you gotta go back and plant them again, right? Because you're not going to do anything to the predators that are killing them, the avian predators. It, it's very important to know what they select for. So, whereas if you, if you release them in a suitable area with minimal predator um, issues, then you could have 80% <coughs> of the population survive. Whereas if you didn't study and you just throw them out there every time and you don't know exactly what's going to happen, maybe only 20% are going to survive. So by, by doing this, you can actually increase your uh, the survivability of the birds like up to 70%. It's never been, there's no literature, it's never been done, it's, this study's never been done, and there's nothing in the literature on this? But Mr. There, Chairman, may, maybe I could make some clarifications. First Chairman. of all, uh, if you go back and look at the literature, which obviously you have not, um, there's very little known about mountain quail, okay? Uh, there's a whole bit, big difference between an avian species like mountain quail and putting fish in the creek, okay? Um, if from a scientific and professional perspective, we could be Johnny Appleseed and run around and throw a few out here and there, but that's been shown pretty much everywhere it's done has been a failure. And the fact of the matter is that when we put these birds in a canyon, what we believe to be the key habitats for that particular species, and all of a sudden they disappear, you scratch your head and you go, well, I wonder why that happened. When in fact, if we're following these birds, we find out what, what habitats they're keen on what limiting factors seem to be driving the population, what they're selecting for, the next time we release, we'll select the variables for the canyon and the release site to improve the, the probability of success. So that's what this $6,000 is really all about, um, is to keep a handle on that. It's not like putting fish in the, in the creek and, and estimating how many people are going to catch them with power bait. Um, it's a whole... $118,000? Is that what we're looking at? 
What what's the total quail number? On this project, it was six thousand dollars. Yeah, I think it was twenty nine thousand that we were asking, and the rest is uh, matching funds from our federal grant. And I guess the other question I, I would I would answer if you take a look at the sharp tail, there is seventy five thousand dollars of federal money. Uh, we're asking for twenty. Uh, Twenty-five thousand were in a match, uh, so there are dollars available. Um, I would like to know um, if you find that information that there are actually dollars specifically available for sharp sharp tail. We'd be all over that. Um, but the fact of the matter is, it's mostly CRP money uh, that would be tied to those uh, that particular species. Everything I know. These but studies have never been done before on mountain quail. on the mountain quail. No, sir, not especially in Nevada. Uh, in fact, there, there, well, there's a heck of a lot more birds in California, for instance. Rocky Gutierrez uh, did his Ph.D. on mountain quail, uh, I think, and one other person that I know of. That, and uh, there's just not a lot known about mountain quail. They're an incidental species, aren't they? Here in Nevada? But I think we have a potential here to provide viable, huntable populations. That's why we're doing this. How much does mountain quail cost to transplant? Do we have a number on that? They're approximately, well, I think it's broken out there, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. $60 per bird? $60 a bird. So I'm just looking at the numbers here. I'm just trying to follow along with uh, what Mr. Lemp was saying. Let's see, the mathematics on that, 118,000, how many birds to transplant? Would you, would you have more, at the end of the day, would you have more quail on the ground? If you transplanted birds with this money? Or would it, how would we best spend? Like, is that the correct question we're asking here? How would we best? There is a resource issue you have to consider as well. It's not like we can just go out and capture hundreds of birds. We're, we're basically being granted permission by either the states of California or Oregon to capture these birds, mm -hmm. and y you want to use some prudence there and not overutilize a resource that's available to you. No, they dictate and in, this. Yeah. In um, many cases, uh, the University of, or uh, uh, Idaho Fish and Game, if we told them that hey, we're not going to do any follow up on Columbian sharp tailed grouse, I doubt they would provide us the bird. Mr. Vogelin? Uh, I represent the ranching community, and of course, you don't have to pick up too many papers in the state to understand how sensitive it has become for the sage in when just a few short years ago they used to darken the sky when they would get up off of the winter white sage ground. And it's scary for me and for the people I represent that if you bring in something that's already sensitive and it's not a success, do we have somebody jump on us as a reason, one more reason to say uh, it's somehow livestock's fault? That's a pretty scary proposition for me. I just wanted to make that statement. Thank you. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Kevin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> we look. It looks like we have twenty nine thousand five hundred of uh, state dollars in this, and I'm assuming that if we just planted birds and didn't have follow up and that sort of thing, we would be foregoing the eighty eight thousand. <coughs> would that be a a correct assumption because there wouldn't be any research uh, component to this project, Sean? That's correct, <coughs> yeah. You would basically be, let's see. The match is right. 29.5 for state So you dollars. would lose $88,000 of federal money. Just wanted to make that point. Any other commissioners have comment? Mr. McBeth? Okay, so so the way I understand it is, is that we are going to uh, uh, get money out of a uh, upland bird program, funded program that we have, and we get money from upland game stamps. We're going to match it uh, three to one, four to one? Three to one. Three to one, mm -hmm. federal dollars. Uh, we're going to put birds on the ground uh, for the benefit of sportsmen and we're going to monitor those birds to in, uh, ensure their success or to learn from that effort to better uh, 
do that program in the future, make adjustments, and that effort is for the benefit of sportsmen. Is that correct? Right. Is that what I understand? Correct. Okay, thank you. Mr. Capurro? So you'll be getting, <clears throat> if I read this correctly, then you'll be getting 100 birds a year for five years to transplant into Nevada. Is that right? For which species are you referring to? I, I'm talking sure. mountain quail. Not correct. Yes. 100 birds. And the total cost for that five-year period is $118,000. Mm -mm. No. No. There, there will be separate costs, $6,000 each year for the birds themselves. And then for a three-year program to do the study, there's a, for the mountain quail study, there's a associated budget on page 23, the last page of that packet. Yep. It shows the year one, year two, and year three costs. And the startup costs are pretty substantial. The year two costs <coughs> are about half that. <coughs> the year three costs are pretty minimal. I guess the point I was trying to make is what, <coughs> what is our cost per bird to put those out on the, on the ground? 60 bucks a bird. He's saying... The total no, cost of the monitoring plus the birds, birds divided by the birds. For the research as well. <laughs> Everything involved in putting 500 I, birds. I would there. have to divide that cost plus $6,000. Uh, I, I did briefly and came up with $236, and I didn't have the 6000 for the last four years. So probably talking somewhere around $400 a bird. Well, you know, one thing that should be made clear here is that during the 50s and 60s when we were big into the exotic upland game bird program which was also federally funded i can only imagine the cost to go over and deal with snowcock in india and how much that cost the sportsman it was federal dollars so it probably didn't cost the sportsman very much i think it would have cost them when they paid the federal taxes and they brought those birds back from India. Raised them in Mason Valley for years and years and years. We have a person in the audience, Walt Mandeville, who was part of that program. And we established a population that is nowhere else in North America. Well, I guess that's my point, though, is that there's a huge difference between snowcock, which there's only one place in this country, I guess, where they're located, and mountain quail that are a fairly common it was also expensive for chucker as well. That was not a cheap program when it first began. And look at the benefits that Nevada Sportsman has reaped because of that program. I'm just saying everybody should understand what we're talking about is about $400 per bird. And that's per bird, which might have a, um, a survival rate of 20%. Mr. Vogler? Uh, Mr. Espinoza, you're kind of... When you reach back into the 50s and the 60s, this old white hair up here remembers those days. And until 1972, eagles were considered flying coyotes. They were shot on sight. Uh, all those different predator birds were shot. Crows were almost non-existent. Magpies. Isaac Walton League used to have a predator hunt every year and give prizes away to kids for the more that they gathered. There were no predator birds. There were no flying coyotes, so to speak. And so... In that day and time, once you got at a population like the Chuckers, even started anywhere, they became just almost a nuisance. There were hundreds and hundreds of them within just a very short time. Today, with these other things going on, are we setting ourselves up to have more federal control from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service if we establish these little minutiae populations of these birds? This is a very serious issue, as the sage hen should have taught us all. Maybe this money would be better spent to try and enhance sage hens uh, rather than trying to bring in more exotic type birds. That's my opinion. Thank you. Okay. Um, you know, I'm sitting here looking at that column of numbers and I was looking at, I mean, $50,000 for four wheel drive trucks. Isn't there some four wheel drive trucks somewhere on somebody's property? Um, we have to get buying one new one for this time. Or is that, what are the expenses are there? Got quads, uh, 
tents at uh, $850 a piece, sleeping bags, 150 you know, we go on to a lot of this equipment. Is this all, isn't it some of this equipment existing within Endow's inventory, or we have to buy new stuff every time, or what are we doing? How is that? Well, if you've seen our vehicle inventory lately, it's pretty it's high special. mileage. And John's driving one right now that has 158,000 miles on it, and I just hope every week that he actually comes back. And it actually is in the shop more than it's probably in the field. So we try and use what we have, but oftentimes, I mean, this is a budget from the university that's, I mean, it's all inclusive, but it may not actually cost that much. And remember that, you know, 75% of that is federal funding. Which is our money too. That's where it came from. We need to watch out for every, all tax dollars, not necessarily only stuff comes out here. Mr. Chairman. I'll go ahead, Mr. Lent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I'll tell you where I'm coming from. I've had a lot of upland game people come to me and said, don't let them spend, let them put some money. When's the last time he planted Hungarian partridge, for example, or, you know? And looking at this list here, it's great if you're a graduate student, $50,000, uh, your tuition is 7000 technician another 10000 73000 and it comes 190000 and yes, it's federal money, a lot of it is, uh, but that's federal money we could use in other programs too, you know. But uh, from the hunters I talk to, they want to see the money used with the stamp to put something on the ground, not to do these studies, and that's why I'd be opposed to this. Okay, any other uh, committee members? We have any other items we want to talk about? I think we'll probably uh, talk pretty good on uh, the the survival movement and habitat use of a mountain quail. Want to go over any of the others? Um, we need to go to public comment on these items. Do you have anybody with a card for this particular item? No. If not, we just call anybody. There, I don't have a well, I have your card here. You yeah. have my card there, young man. Paul Dixon, Clark County. Uh, Chairman Rain, do you can you give a roll call of how the county advisory boards gave comment on this? I know that you received at least eight or ten counties worth of comments. Can you give us a summary of what the counties felt about these proposals? Because that's representing the sportsmen, and that's what this is, is Upland Game Sportsman's dollars we're talking about spending here. You're representing Clark County. What was your what Clark County do? Clark County supported this 100%. I'm asking. Thank you. Can you? Guess the answer is no. I did read all the minutes that I could find. I did not uh, do a total tally sheet on this particular item. Mr. Chairman, I could Go ahead, answer, Mr. Kevin. I could answer oh. that. Uh, um, actually, we're kind of public like. comment. Let's. Okay. We'll get back to the commission. Got anything? We'll have another chance at it. I guess you want Darrell Harwell, Washoe County. We voted to approve the request for the money to the state. We also <clears throat> put in, uh, make a recommendation that over the $160,000 at the <coughs> Wildlife Commission, that the state <clears throat> shows you where the funds are going for, and if it transfer from this one to this one, that they bring in your board for approval of the money for the salary. Just call up anybody. Gilliana Carson Advisory Board. Uh, Carson City County voted in favor of the various projects submitted by the department. Candido Mendy, Velco County, uh, we also supported it unanimously. Uh, Walt Mandeville, Lyon County, our county supports the uh, department recommendations, and I'd like to mention that mountain quail are a native species to the state of Nevada, and a lot of these other species were imported and are exotic, so I think that's an important consideration. Thank you. Do we have anybody else? Go ahead, sir. 
Mr. Taylor. Would you fill out a card, Greg? No, I did not. Would you? Uh, when you leave, sir. When you're done. You'll have, you'll have time. Please fill it out the secretary. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Greg Tanner. I'm representing myself today. Uh, this Upland game stamp is a little bit different than, for example, the Predator Management Program, where I get the luxury of giving you $3 for an application for my big game uh, opportunity, if you will, and then you get to take that $3 and apply it to a Predator Management Plan. I may or may not live long enough to be able to actually benefit from your expenditure of that three bucks down the line, chances are I won't live long enough or I'll never draw a tag in an area where you apply that funding. Conversely, I get to pay this ten bucks for an Upland game stamp every year. And I've done it since its inception. And unfortunately, the detail or emphasis has not been applied to this Upland Game Management Program like it has the other one. Now, we need some things done. It ought to be very clearly apparent. The Fish and Wildlife Service rendered a decision in March 2010 on sage grouse, identifying it as being warranted but precluded. We've got species of sage grouse in this state that very simply could be listed within a three to five year time frame. You've got a pot of money sitting here. You've also got a prescription for management contained within the governor's sage grouse plan and local area plans. It's a recipe book for how to spend this money. Why don't you spend it that way? Provide some direction. Get something done. It'll keep the feds off your behind, allow you to graze a little longer, and it'll, for that matter, allow us access to public lands if we can keep that bird off the list. We need money, we need to fund some projects. And it shouldn't be rocket science. For that matter, what these gentlemen are asking for, for in the way of funding for both mountain quail and Columbia sharp-tailed grouse, those species also have been formally petitioned for listing. And fortunately, they were not because the states had the data to uh, make an argument in opposition of listing with the feds. Where do you think that data came from? It came from the expenditure of state dollar to collect data to prove that they didn't warrant listing. That's why they're not listed today. That's what these guys are asking you for, for funding. That data will keep, keep you out of the doghouse in the future. But in the meantime, you've got some recipe books for how to spend my $10. And I would ask that you consider doing that. Uh, we'll, we'll have plenty of chance. Do you want to ask him a question? Yeah. Just questions right now. We'll have comments. Mr. Tanner, I, I'm sorry I don't know you. Uh, could you uh, 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 set forth your background? I, I'm just curious what your background <laughs> is. You sound like you know what you're talking about. Well, I'm a Churchill County resident. And for that, from that standpoint, I appreciate you coming to visit with me today. I'm a professional dog trainer and uh, I'm a native Nevadan. Lived here 57 years. Um, retired state employee. Thank you. Mr. Uh, we'll explain, uh, <laughs> expound upon that later. Uh, Mr. Pearl. As Mr. Tanner, uh, <coughs> under the circumstances that you described, wouldn't we be better off in going more heavily into the sage grouse, which is in danger of being uh, delisted, than to go to other species such as mountain quail, which aren't in the realm of being delisted? I think you could make a strong case for that, yes. Well, but that's my whole point, uh, at the same time, there may not be enough money in the state of Nevada That's to true. successfully perform and complete conservation actions that are, re that are going to be required to keep sage grouse from being, being listed in the state of Nevada. But it's an obvious place to start, and it's sitting right there in front of you. But we got to try. Okay. Can I add something to that real quick? All right. And then we got to move on to the public comment. 
uh, just for the commission's uh, I, that was I don't just for the commission's information chance. we do have a separate grant for sage grouse uh, and that's largely funded through some of the upland game stamp dollars and we also fund a lot of habitat projects through question one funding as well as habitat conservation fee so all the pinion juniper projects you see out on the landscape reseeding all those types of things are being paid for with either question one or wildlife heritage or other sources of habitat funding so we are doing things for sage grouse just out of a different grant thank you okay was there any other public comment seeing none we'll move we'll close the public comment and come back now i know mr cabin had a uh, comment earlier he wanted to make uh, i just tabulated the responses from the cabs when they came in and uh, some of them commented, but I'll just list them. It's Washoe, Carson City, Eureka, Douglas, Clark, Humboldt, Elko, and Lyon were all in favor. And if I missed anybody, uh, or if I read it wrong, uh, please let us know. Thank you. Good luck. Any other commissioners? Have any further comments on this or questions, Mr. Espinoza? Or yes, best. Yes, Mr. Mr. Yeah. Did you also read in uh, the uh, Washoe County? They made some uh, comments on some requirements they'd like to see on. Yeah, he mentioned that. Yeah. Okay. Any further commission comments? I, I have a question, um, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Vogel. Mr. Espinoza. If you get this funding and you take these quail over a period of time, what would be if if you are somewhat or successful enough? What what would be the turnaround to have a huntable population? Ten years, five years. A good example would be the Desatoya population that we have now. There was some initial work done in the early '90s uh, by Dave Delahani um, to release birds there, China Lake. National, uh, Naval Weapon Station, those birds are now basically a, a well-established and huntable population. Um, and they were probably eight years ago. But these so five to eight years, more than likely, if you're successful. These new projects could be a total failure if we can't get a handle on the, uh, the raptors. Well, we don't know that, for sure. But, they, but the ones that you've had in the past, I'm the new guy. You have to get me up to speed. In the past, they failed. Is that what you're saying? That no. And these are re-augmentations? No. No. They, they've been largely successful. But there have been other episodes where we haven't been as successful as we thought we would. Or there's birds that show up, you know, 10 years from release that we have undocumented. Thank you. Now, was there a study done on that, on those other augmentations before? I mean... I assume there was there was some work done and written up by Dave Delahani on soft release technologies methods methodology and the results from those studies was face I mean to summarize to summarize he, he basically showed that the soft release techniques was preferable over hard release techniques but timing of the year could have been better than others there was also some uh, implication that some birds from China Lake, as opposed to birds from elsewhere, may be more successful than others. So that's something that we would like to investigate as well. Could you define soft release and hard release for people who may not? Basically, a hard release is taking them to a site and just opening the door and letting them go. Soft release, you can pen them up for a period of time, get them, let them get acclimated to the area, and then, and then let them go goes. rather than <coughs> scaring them. Okay, anything further from the commission? Ready for motion? Mr. Chairman, are we Wait a minute. Hold on. Where are, we, where are we at here? We are, yeah, this is action number 10. Yep. We're ready. Yes. We're, are we, we're voting on the total. On whatever the motion is, is what we're voting on. In other words, we could take a mite of my item? The motion. We can do whatever the motion says. <laughs> we could add or subtract. Yeah. Add, subtract, as long as it's within the scope of the agenda item. Delete. And as long <laughs> as uh, Mr. Stockton says it's legal. 
Go ahead, Mr. Kevin. I'd like to make a motion that uh, we accept the uh, Upland Game Bird Stamp Program fiscal year 2011 uh, as presented. I'll second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Moved by Mr. Kevin, seconded by Mr. McBeth to approve the fiscal year 2011 Upland Game Stamp request as presented is there any further discussion i uh go ahead mr Lent. i would be opposing the motion because uh i think we should spend more money on releasing them like we did before and we get we got viable population released them not studying i think we've studied quail enough <coughs> to know what they how they migrate we did it last year we gave money and i think we'd be better off to spend this money even though it is federal matching we could take the federal money and use it for other projects but releasing birds I think there's enough knowledge right now to release birds and uh, see if we get viable populations going for the uh, sportsmen in the state instead of studying them any further so I'll be voting against the uh, because I think it's a waste of money on some of these projects but I think would be good, but not the major ones like I disclosed before. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else, Mr. Chairman? And turn off that microphone unless you're going to. Thank you. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Chairman. Just to kind of make sure what we're voting on. That's uh, the total is three seventy one eight fifty two. Is that that includes the twelve thousand five hundred that you said was? Uh, would that be included in the motion? Yes. Yeah, and would that is that acceptable? Uh, yes, that yes, that's so, acceptable. Okay, so yes, that would include the additional twelve thousand five hundred that was missing out of the original proposal. Any further discussion? Seeing none, proceed to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, signify. Aye. Aye. No. aye. No. 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 Okay. We will have a hand vote, please. All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. We have three, three, four. four. Excuse me. We have Mr. Okay. Did you get that, Susan? Did you see who's okay. Mr. Wallace, Mr. Cavan, Mr. Pearl, Mr. McBeth. Wallace, Cavan, Capurl, Capurl, McBeth. Got it? Got it. All opposed? Everybody else, including me. Motion fails. Ready for new motion. Uh, five to four. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mr. I, I had uh, moved no. that, that we uh, take the projects one at a time and vote on them. I, so I think that would be a motion to divide. No, no, that would be there was a motion already made. Um, basically, I think at this point you could go ahead and just make a motion and set it. We could do that we, one at a time, yeah. We can just go ahead and just make a motion for one. You're still talking in my district. We'll expect 10 different motions then. If that's acceptable to the group. Actually, 12. Or as many as it takes. Or we could have group, groups of projects. I'll second the motion. Okay, it's been properly moved and seconded that we take these one project at a time. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Mr. Chairman, could we also, would you accept that uh, you could also make a motion to do groups so that we don't have to have 12 motions possible? Would that I'm be just acceptable? processing the motion here, and if uh, he wanted, uh, Mr. Cavan would like to know if we could have groups of projects as well. In part of this motion or just leave it as it is that would be acceptable that would be acceptable make of the motion be acceptable a second yeah be a okay acceptable. so the motion currently on the tables you'll take these projects either individually or in groups depending on the motion mr. chairman yes go ahead may I just clarify one point uh, regarding the the motions um, these projects are written in the federal grants okay and if you're going to take them individually and try to reallocate money, uh, that could create issues with the federal grants. We've got about, with all these projects, about $270,000 of federal funds 
at stake and we would have to go back and, and rewrite those grants. I'm sure these gentlemen would know better than I specifically would have to be changed, but I just want to make you aware of that if you are shuffling money between those projects, it could create issues with the federal funding source. Fair enough. So, so everybody understands that? You said 270 something thousand? Uh, by my rough estimates that, yeah, about $270,000 of federal funds. Then we'd have to go back and reallocate. And I will um, attempt it when any motion is, after we've processed this motion, if anybody else makes a motion that we think uh, might affect some grants, I'll ask you to come up and maybe give us a brief, just so we know exactly what we're voting on. Okay, um, we are, now we are talking about the motion. Is there any further comment on this motion? That, would take more than that we can either take these individually or in in groups, as opposed to all at once. That was the motion, and been properly moved and seconded. Any further discussion on that? Just on the process. All in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 I vote aye for the record. All opposed? Okay. Passes un unanimously. Yes. Okay. So make sure that wasn't a late proposed. Okay. No. <coughs> Unanimously passes. Okay. Mr. Capurro has a motion. I would like to move that the f that we approve the first three uh, items on the project list: Southern Nevada Upland Game Water Development Maintenance, uh, and the uh, new new units to be built. That's number two, and then the uh, Western and Eastern Region Water Development Maintenance. That total is I haven't. I'm sorry, it's uh, about uh, 230 some thousand dollars. Would that motion include the 12,500? Yes, sir. Second. Okay, it's been moved, properly moved and seconded to approve the first three projects. Does everybody understand those first three projects or should I, do I need to restate them? Okay, everybody understands which of the first three projects on the list to include the 12500 that was left off of the third project, which referred to as Upland Game Water. Mr. Chairman? Philip, yes. Excuse me. Um, is this pages one, two, and three, basically? Oh, okay. I, if you go to the project summary list, which is, actually, it's before page one. Oh, it's yeah. before page one. Okay. Is everybody on that project summary list before page one? Is there any commissioner not on that page? I want to make sure we're clear. Please correct, Mr. Chairman, in that it involves the uh, one through actually page four of the specific project that follows. Oh, okay. It, it is those projects that are on page one through four. Okay. So is everybody clear on the motion? Is anybody not clear on the motion? Those first three projects, Southern Nevada Upland Game Water Development, Southern Nevada Upland New Game Water Development, Upland Game Water Development. Any comments? Proceed to vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 I vote aye for the record. All opposed? Pat, this is unanimously. Waiting on a motion. Waiting on a motion. Just a second. Okay. Chairman Rain. Go, go ahead, Mr. McBeth. I'm um, just looking at the list. I see three that are uh, roughly the same, uh, relatively small um, maintenance uh, food pots at Mason Valley Wildlife Management Area, purchased pheasants for Mason Valley Wildlife Management Area, and food pots at Mason Valley Wildlife Management Area seed mix. Uh, the amounts are $3,405, and $2,350. I'll move to approve those projects as written. Second. Okay, it's been, it's been properly moved and seconded to approve the maintenance of food plots at Mason Valley Wildlife Management Area which in the amount of $3,405. Purchase of pheasants for Mason Valley Wild, Wildlife Management Area, amount of $500. Food plots at Mason Valley Wildlife Management Area, Prince Seed Mix, amount of $2,350. Is that correct? That's correct. Does everybody understand the motion? Any further comments? 
Seeing none, proceed to vote. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 I vote aye for the record. All opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Chairman, Mr. Pro, it moves that we approve uh, the item on Battle Mountain Metal Restoration, the uh, Sportsman's Journal, and the Santa Rosa Project as one. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded to approve the Battle Mountain Metal Restoration in the amount of $6,000, Sportsman's Journal in the amount of $3,500. Santa Rosa project in the amount of three thousand eight hundred dollars. Is everybody clear on the motion? Any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, proceed to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I vote aye for the record. All opposed. Put motion passes unanimously. Nine zero. Chairman Reed. Go ahead, Mr. McBeth. Uh, I'd like to uh, make a motion to uh, pass the Upland Game Trap Transplant and Monitor Program as written. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded to pass to approve the Upland Game Trap Transplant and Monitor in the amount of sixty thousand five hundred and fifty dollars. Is everybody clear on the motion? Is what? there? Yes. Question on the motion. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, Patrick. Kates, you there you were going to this uh, particular motion involves about ninety nine thousand dollars in in uh, different grants is that correct Let's see that's one of the page what is that seven? page seven six seven. And seven. six and seven yeah. I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Is that okay. $99,000 $99, worth of grants involved in this? Yes, so that's, that's correct. Plus the $60,550 in the Upland Game contribution from the state. Right? That's correct for the state match, yes. Can that be reallocated? You um, had a question, Mr. Lent, on these, this item? Can, can that be can reallocated we, anything? Uh, well, the grants are written for these projects. They they can't. We have to go back to the feds and request them to amend the grant. We can't just reallocate it. That was the point. How long I was trying does that to make. take? I'm I'm not sure. <laughs> well, for for sure, two things. One is first, that they have to grant it, and number two, it, it normally takes months because this we've been you have to do all the preliminary work to get the proposal on the. On the desk, it, it's more than a phone call. That's for sure. Yeah. Federal bureaucracy. Go ahead. Um, you have motion and second. Yes, I need discussion. Assistant. And I'm I'm going to vote yes on this question, but uh, uh, with my my uh, tongue firmly in my cheek. And the reason is this: that. I think that we would have been better served in putting more money into sage grouse, rough grouse, uh, than what we show in, in the projects that we have. I, I would have liked to have seen that written up originally in that form because that's the problem area that we have. We're not under a listing problem as far as mountain quail is concerned. And so to put that kind of money, that kind of monitoring, that kind of effort into a, a species that is not endangered uh, causes me some heartburn. But I am also not willing to have to send you back to rewrite those grants in the future. I would appreciate it if that information would be shared with us before we get to this meeting here or the last time that we took this up so that we're well aware of what grants that you're applying for. Thank you. Okay, any further questions or comments on this agenda item or before we, uh, on this item we're about to vote on? Mr. Kevin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think we're 
we're well beyond the uh, point that we can uh, uh, risk federal funding and, and <coughs> go back and try and and re um, reinvent the wheel for another project. Um, uh, I know that uh, uh, some of the commissioners aren't happy with this particular project, but uh, uh, I don't think that we uh, would be serving the public if we don't go forward. Okay, is there any further discussion? As far as um, I just have brief discussion on this, I'm somewhat disappointed there's not more money being spent on sage grouse, and I am somewhat uh, worried about the bringing more about this clumbum sharp tailed grouse issue in this, as well as these wind energy projects. And I think this this should really come back at, in, in the future before these projects get to this stage. Um, no further, seeing no further discussion, proceed to vote. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Nay. 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 Okay. Let me, let's, we do this by a show of hands. I think I got it, but this should be certain. All, all, all in favor of the motion were Commissioner Macbeth, Commissioner McPearl, Mr. Vogler, Mr. Wallace, and Mr. Cannon. Do we have that? That? that would be, okay. And all opposed would be myself, Commissioner Lent, Commissioner Shrum, and Commissioner Howell. Motion passes five to four. Mr. Lent. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that uh, we do not uh, fund the last two projects, the Gamble's Quell Monitoring and the Mountain Quell Studying Project, due to, I don't think it's needed. It's one's titled... Uh, Survival movement and habitat used by mountain quail in northern Nevada, and I think we already know that. And the other is Gamble's quail habitat use. Those are the name of the project. I'll second that motion. It's been properly moved and seconded not to fund the Gamble's quail monitoring project, the amount of $12,000, and not to fund the mountain quail study, the amount of $29,500. Is there for any discussion on this before we go? Mr. McBeth, go ahead. Um, with regard to the uh, gamble quail monitoring, um, it, it appears just uh, quickly reading uh, that this is located in uh, southern Nevada, at least in Clark County and Lincoln County. Is that correct? That's correct, Chairman McBeth. Chairman McBeth. Oh, that would be First. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's also occurring in Utah. There's a quite a bit of study going on uh, that the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources is uh, undergoing there. So we're kind of piggybacking on some research that's going on there. Okay, and I understand that um, uh, that uh, the, the BLM, uh, in conjunction with the Department of Wildlife, has put in a number of guzzlers in, in that area, at least in the Lincoln County area. Is that, uh, is that right as well? Correct. Okay, and, and w would that somehow be... Um, a part of the uh, equation. Uh, in other words, the monitoring would be uh, with regard to the guzzlers, uh, the new guzzlers that have gone in. Yes, correct. And, and habitat use of burned areas versus areas that have not been burned. Okay. Uh, some areas are recovering, some areas aren't. Are they using water developments in burned areas continuing on today or not? Um, I'm going to vote no on this because it, you've linked these two, um, the, the mountain quail. Uh, uh, the mountain quail with the gambles uh, uh, monitoring. I, I think that, uh, uh, and I would hope that the uh, uh, my uh, 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 fellow commissioners from the south would realize the benefits of this uh, monitoring program for the sportsmen of southern Nevada. Uh, quail uh, is, uh, would probably without a doubt, our number one uh, upland game bird, uh, the gambles quail uh, in southern Nevada, and I really consider you know, Lincoln <coughs> County to be a part of that as well. Uh, well within range of uh, um, uh, the sportsman in uh, southern Nevada and so uh, yeah. uh, I would I would actually rather see these two split okay 
Anybody any other discussion on this subject? Mr. Lent. Uh, the reason I'm opposed, like for example, the quail habitat, because what they're going to assess is harvest rates. We can get that from hunter information. Uh, cause mortality, we've already had some testimony on what cause mortality, and I think we already have all the information that we need on, on these quail uh, and home range size, uh, you know, they're limited by water and a few other things. And I think we already have the information and we don't need to do another study. I think it would be better uh, for the commissioner from Las Vegas to just plant uh, Gamble's quail, which is the most popular upland game bird in, in the south, and would be much better to take the money and just plant some Gamble's quail, which you already have down there, and quit studying the movement where they go. We know where they go. They've survived down there and uh, use the money and put some birds on the ground. That's why I made the motion. Thank you, Mr. Lent. Anyone else? Any comments on this? Mr. For the discussion? Okay. Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, one point. Uh, none of this involves uh, federal grants. It's all, it's all uh, public game stamp money. Oh, well, there's uh, this one here. Wildlife restoration grant. And that one. I'm talking about the twelve thousand dollars for the no. for the uh, the gambles quail monitoring. Gambles quail monitoring. habitat use. No. And this we is can actually use that as match for our general W48 grant. It's a large grant that covers big game and upland game resources, and we can use that to match our portion of state state match for and reduce our license dollar commitment towards that particular grant. What? But. All the others explain that, where you have the uh, categories 72 or the, the uh, W48 funds. All this says is that it's upland game stamp uh, costs for radio transmitters and uh, for BYU wildlife tech. Right, but any, any state funding can be used for match for a federal grant, and that would, like I said, reduce our license dollar commitment. Mr. Chair. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead, Mr. Powell. You gotta bear with me. I, what you're saying is this eighty-eight thousand five hundred. That would be money that we wouldn't lose immediately. We could use it for something else. Is that what you said? No. Not without rewriting our grant. Oh. Which would, uh, as Director Mayor explained, takes a while. Yeah. It would take three months, and quite honestly, by the time we got everything and because that's not the first step the second step is doing the work program writing the contract that's yeah. before you know it, it's next fiscal year the reason I bring that up go ahead mr. Well, mr. And chairman then we'll is, move on to vote on this uh, like mr. Lent, I would have preferred that we spend uh, for our project uh, they don't understand this is a series of grants. Um, category 72 page 19 that we would have spent that twelve thousand dollars for putting birds on the ground. So it's a separate grant. And uh, um, that's go ahead. the reason. Deputy Director, do you have a comment on uh, maybe clarify the grants? Situation? I just just want to try to clarify that a little bit. The um, uh, the mountain quail project has eighty eight thousand. Uh, five hundred dollars identified specifically in the W forty eight grant. Uh, if if we don't approve this, that money's not going to be available without amending the grant. But the other project, the twelve thousand dollars, that is all upland game stamp money. But our main federal grant, any activity that we do that's related, we can use that as match without having to rewrite the grant. So if this money is not approved. We'll have to find some other source of match for that overall general general grant. But the other project with the grant money specifically written, that project's written into the grant. All right. One last question for you, and then we'll move on to vote. Mr. Go ahead. Chairman. I had oh, one last two, question. Excuse me. Oh. Go ahead, Mr. Lent, and then we'll have Mr. Oh. Shrum, and then I'm we'll sorry. go. Then we'll go on. Uh, but uh, we'd have the twenty nine thousand five hundred, and we'd have the six thousand that we could use to plant birds if we wanted to, right? Well, that's the, that's the stamp money. Right. We could use that stamp money to plant birds if we didn't use it for these projects. But not right? this year. Huh? Not this year. You're approving the use of upland game money for this coming fiscal year, the fiscal year we're in. Well, we so. could use it to plant birds. 
we could go ahead and have something on the next agenda. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Trump. Mr. Chairman, you're, you're aware that any study uh, being done in Southern Nevada is going to be affected by the fact that the BLM and other agencies have fenced off have fenced off thousands and thousands of acres in Lincoln County, my county, and particularly Clark County, where it's going to be inaccessible to any studies other than studying the, maybe the moon because we can't get in there. It's virtually off limits to us. That's something to take into consideration. Okay, and personally, you know, I, we're looking at 200, what are we talking about? Over, well, if you include the year two and three of one study, 200 and $2,850, part of it's over the next three years. You know, why isn't this being spent to help out sage grouse would be my question. Anyways, we've got a motion, second, to have the discussion. Let's, does everybody understand the motion? Is that clear? Could you repeat which, it? Which is Gamble's quail monitoring, $12,000, mountain quail study in the amount of $29,500 to, how'd, we, how'd you put that, reject those? Mm -hmm. That was the motion. Do not approve. Not approve. Do not approve it. To not approve those two projects. Everybody understand the motion? All in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? No. no. Okay. All in favor? Signify raising your hand. All in favor? We have Mr. Vogler, Mr. Lent, Mr. Rain, Mr. Capurro, Mr. Trum, Mr. Howell. All opposed? Ms. Mr. Macbeth? Mr. Wallace, Mr. Cabin. So that ma that motion passes six to three. Motion. Mr. Lent, did you have another motion on this? I'd like to make another motion that we use the money on these two projects. You, you can't do that. It's got to be noticed under the open meeting. Okay, yeah. At the next appropriate at the next okay. appropriate meeting. I won't okay. say anything more. Okay, that's it for item number 10. Time for break, and then we'll come back with item number 11. <laughs> 10 minute break. <laughs> Adjourn at 10, 3.10. We <laughs> adjourn. That's not a word. Uh, recess. The oh. no, recess until then. <laughs> we adjourn. Depending <laughs> 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 on vocabulary. <laughs> Go to the 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 the